Hi there, this is Derek from Pacific Coast Auto and here we are once again taking a look at another R32 Skyline GTR that we're exporting to the USA. As with all cars to the USA, this one has to be 25 years old and the Skyline R32s are now 25 years old. So this is the GTR model with the RB26 twin turbo engine that puts out somewhere between about 280 and 300 horsepower. The engine started up without a problem. And actually, let me just say this before we get into the review. This one's got nearly 300,000 kilometers on it. The highest GTR that I've actually seen in person. And so this is quite interesting to take a look at the condition of the car and compare it to the lower mileage ones which we usually buy. And so I guess before we get into that, I'll just do once around of the car here so that you can see. The car has had a lot of uh, paint and body repairs to it. And although the car hasn't been in an accident, there is some wavy paint here and there. I also will mention that the engine decides that it wants to stall every once in a while, but doesn't actually stall unless you're playing around with the brakes. If you pump the brakes, the engine will stall. And so it seems like there's some problem with the vacuum there. It's not something that we're going to address here, but once the car lands, please check that out. Okay, so the coolant looks like it's weak. Looks like it's... Uh, not your standard mix of coolant, possibly so that you can have a higher percentage of water in case the car is going to be used for uh, high power driving. It is a very large, uh, much bigger than regular aluminum radiator in here. I think it's a triple core. Your airbox is stock there, no strut tower bar. Intake is normal. The RB26s, see the idle is a little bit weird, right? The RB26s sound funny on my camera, but they don't sound funny in real life. Uh, well, that's not completely true. They are a loud, noisy engine, but my camera picks them up a little bit worse than regular. They do have six throttle bodies, which is pretty amazing because most cars will just have one, right? Here. This one's got six, one for each cylinder. Okay, so the engine sounds healthy to me. It's got this aftermarket grounding kit, which I don't think is really worth it. Uh, this area here looks like it's had some repairs of rust or paint repairs to prevent the rust. On this side, it's got some rust right here. And it seems like the idle problem might be coming from the AC compressor being on because you could just hear it going off there and it made a funny sound. There is a leak coming from here. fluid looks normal, brake fluid looks normal. Aftermarket horns. Okay, so let's lower the hood here. And let me mention that it is aluminum hood and front fenders on these cars, and that's stock. Okay, so this one's got the Nismo front bumper. The only difference between that and the regular one is these extra ducts here that feed into your intercooler or your radiator. This is an aftermarket intercooler on this one. It's also got this hood deflector which is part of the Nismo Aero package and that one allows more air to go into uh, your front than on the standard one. It's got slightly different side skirts there aftermarket aero mirrors, stock rear wing, and it doesn't have the Nismo under wing which will fit underneath here. I want to say a shout out to somebody in the comments that told me that the wheels on the GTR are made out of magnesium and not aluminum. And so there is some confusion whether they're made by BBS or not. As far as I can tell, they're not. They have no BBS markings on them, but the V-Spec 2 wheels are made by BBS, and they have a different design, and they look more like a traditional BBS wheel. Cross-drilled brakes are standard on the GTR. Four piston calipers. And this one's lucky, because it's got almost brand new tires. They're 2014, and they have about 90% tread. No aftermarket suspension on this, which is actually kind of good, because Double wishbone suspension doesn't like aftermarket suspension that well. And so I think Nissan knew more about the suspension travels of companies rather than companies that just want to lower your car. 
Uh, it's not like a McPherson strut layout where you can just lower the car and everything will stay in alignment. Okay, so exhaust is nice sounding. That is, if you like nice sounding exhaust. So, some people might think that it's racer, but no, the RB26 sounds awesome. And especially so with a big bore exhaust like that. See the bridge in the background? Oh, nice. Okay, so mechanically, it's got a couple of things. Body-wise, it's got a couple of things. But for 300,000 clicks, I'm pretty happy with this one. A little bit misaligned at the front bumper on this side and on the other side. And because some states don't like you having fun, they don't let you have your license plate bracket on the side here because they're looking for reasons to be angry at people who like cars. I don't know. And so you might have to change that. It depends on your state. Okay, I just noticed this, a little bit of cracking inside the lens that I didn't see before. Okay, so many of the panels have been repainted and you can tell if you take a look, a close look. Most people don't take a close look at the paint. Um, I do, because it's kind of my job, but... The paint is faded on this door and on the trunk and on the rear wing. Okay, so let's take a look at the auction sheet now. This is the inspection from the auction. And this is what they said. 1990 Skyline GTR with the RB26, grade, auction grade 3.5 with interior C. 287, 500 kilometers, original mileage, five speed, Nismo front bumper, Nismo type side steps, aftermarket exhaust, HID headlights, the engine and the turbo have both been rebuilt. It doesn't say when on here though. Regular RB26 won't last until 300,000 clicks. They're good for about 150 to 170 if taken care of well. Uh, dashboard has been replaced, and actually that's a big deal on these cars. Uh, I'll get into that in a sec. Aluminum radiator, and uh, this one says something about the user and when he traded it in and something. My, the person who does the translations of these sheets can probably tell you better than I can what that says. Steering wheel peeling. Shift knob wear, and both are aftermarket units. Rear spoiler paint peeling, aftermarket door mirrors, wheel scratched, seat stain, interior dirty and scratched. Underside is one part that's scratched and dented. The AC doesn't work. Now I did turn on the AC, and although it does feel cold, you can't select where the AC is coming out of. Engine oil leak. On the body here, it says scuff on the front bumper. W2 means a repainted panel. As you can see, all full sides on the back here, the hood, the front bumper, and the back bumper have been repainted. There are clear coat cracks in the back. They didn't mention about the faded paint on this side, which is really too bad. So that's just what it is. And paint comes up in the back bumper there. Okay, a little bit of uh, paint coming off those wipers. And the hood has some sort of substance on the paint here that looks like it might affect the paint. Okay, your window gaskets seem to be okay. They're not perfect. You can see this one is a little bit coming out and this one as well. But compared to many of them, they're great. This one right here tends to always crack and it's an expensive one to fix. And so it's great that that one is in good shape. The door feels a bit funny when you open it. Door cards are dirty, seats are dirty, but power windows work. I actually didn't just check the, oh, that's why I didn't check. I was going to say the folding mirrors, but obviously they don't work with an aftermarket unit. Okay, stock GTR seats, which are a lovely seat. And this one is obviously not the original one because if you take a look at the passenger one, it's all worn out and always the driver's seats are more worn out than the passenger seats. There's also really dirty ghetto floor mats here that have been cut to size. Okay, sit inside. Okay, aftermarket speakers. I don't know if you can see that. Here's a steering wheel that's aftermarket. Wear on the side there. Now I already did get the video for the interior check, so I'm just going to briefly look at this. I guess everybody wants to know what a 300,000 click car looks like. Keep it in mind, that's kilometers, not miles. 
Okay, so crack here, some cracks on the console here. Okay, dirty here, dirty skyline sticker. Okay, inside doesn't smell like cigarettes. I believe it's never been smoked in. No bubbles here, which is unbelievable. Super lucky. The liner is a bit dirty. Overall, 300,000 kilometers. I'm happy with the interior of this. It needs to be cleaned, obviously. But I uh, just noticed something else. The top is not quite aligned there. Can we get a focus? Yes, we can. Okay, and aftermarket speakers in the back. All right, clutch, power steering, works good. The brakes make the car do funny things, and I'll just show you in a sec. So, I'm gonna step on the brake pedal here. And it looks like we're not having problems this time. Okay, we were about 15 minutes ago. Maybe it has something to do with the heat of the engine. Right now, we're running up just a little bit of uh, oil temperature and stock. Uh, 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 here we go, water temperature. Okay, the clutch is an aftermarket heavy duty one. Certainly feels aftermarket. And it looks like you got some sticky gunk on here. And a turbo timer. So the turbo timer will let your engine run for another 30 seconds or a minute after you shut it off so that the turbo can cool itself down because it's hard on the turbo if you don't do that. Okay, aftermarket MD player here, which is popular in Japan for some reason. Because in Japan, you can actually rent CDs. Oh, four-wheel drive light is on, and when I first started the car, it wasn't on. After the funny stumbling thing with the brakes and it's stalling, that's when it came on. So, something to check into. Okay, so that's going to be it for the 288. 1000 kilometer engine rebuilt RB26 Skyline GTR going to the USA. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, then please post them in the comments section. You can send me an email if you want. We do get a lot of emails. We get several hundred emails a day. And so we try to get back to everyone as soon as we can. And if it takes a few days, I'm sorry about that. And uh, I will try to get back to you as soon as possible. So thanks a lot for watching and have a good day.